more than two million emergency calls are made every year in Victoria. You're not going to die, mate. You're not going to die. Well done. One call every 12 seconds. Securing the survivor. On the front line. You're with the ambulance. We've got you. Paramedics work around the clock. You're being very, very brave. Fighting to save lives. Oh. Pass me your hand. It's OK. Cameras capture unguarded moments. Doing a good job, buddy. Of compassion. Hello. Look where you are. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. And laughter. We got it. <laughs> this is not a catastrophe. <laughs> it's all part of the daily lives. Congratulations. Of these emergency service heroes. It's Emily Lum. I'll look after you, I promise. Woo! Yeah. on this episode of Paramedics. You know what? I reckon you're pretty lucky tonight. A former grave digger laughs in the face of death. If you hadn't have called an ambulance today, oh, yeah, there's probably. the potential that you might have died. Yeah, that's probably my <laughs> I don't reckon I've had anyone in my career having a heart attack that's as happy and as jovial as him. <laughs> a frantic mother races home to her sick little boy. Children are stressful jobs because they can compensate up until a point and then they rapidly deteriorate. Oh, I've never been so scared in my life. The main thing I'm worried about is, like, I'm in the office. Yeah. All these work people are going to see me in my jocks. And Steve and Emily's patient leaves nothing to the imagination. If you've got it, flaunt it, mate. Seriously. Emergency services. Tell me exactly what's happened. My husband's fallen off a ladder. Okay, and how far did he fall? I don't know, he's on a fairly big ladder. Was it more than three metres or less than three metres? More than three metres. Okay. At the Victorian Emergency Communication Centre, a call is coming in from a distressed wife. Oh my God, he's got blood bleeding everywhere. <laughs> 99, so cut one. Intensive care paramedic Cullen is now on his way to the alarming accident. I'm wondering why is someone up on the ladder who's over 70 years old? Obviously, we need to think about if there's a life threatening hemorrhage or if there's any airway issues. Falling off a ladder from a height is dangerous for anyone. And as you get older, people don't recover as well from falls or fractures. So at 77 years of age, this could be a really serious injury. So the day begins. It does, Dal. It's the start of shift for paramedic buddies Steve and Emily. And they don't have to wait long for their first job. All right, what are we going to? We're going to a 27-year-old male, low blood pressure, trouble breathing and overheating. Overeating? I said overheating. Overheating. <laughs> I can empathise with the patient because I'm like, well, it has been COVID. I've definitely been overeating as well. We're both overeating. <laughs> the pants are tight. The pants are tight today. But yeah, you never know. Could be anything. This job has the potential to be really minor, like dehydration, easy to fix, or something really serious like asthma and an anaphylactic reaction. OK. Come on, girlfriend. Let's do it. So your mind's sort of racing at all the aspects of what this job could now potentially turn into. Oh, OK. Alrighty. Hello. I'm Steve, and this is Emily. So what's going on today? Talk to me. It's just... it's getting worse. Explain to me what's getting worse. I like my, my brain. Your brain. My, so I'm getting more dizzy. So is your skin normal at the moment? This isn't a rash or anything. No, the reason I've taken off all my clothes is just I was just trying to access the... Your groin? Yeah. For coldness, so I've been trying to put coldness... The best thing is to neck. put it on your neck, yeah. And my wrist. When you breathe really fast, you actually breathe out lots of cum dioxide, so it upsets the acid balance in your body, and it can make you feel like numb and tingly everywhere. Vince is feeling really dizzy. He's literally in his underwear, and he doesn't feel well at all. What we're going to do is we're going to check you over from head to toe. He looks really short of breath. He looks like he's in a great deal of discomfort. Something could be really wrong here. Look at me, Vince. I, I can't, I can't. Seven, six. Cullen has been called to a 77-year-old patient. 
who's fallen off a three metre ladder from the roof of his house. Hello, ambulance. His wife, Carol, found him unconscious, bleeding from the head. Hello. My name's Cullen, but what's the problem today? Come off the ladder. Off the ladder. What's your name, mate? Barry. Barry. So you've fallen off the ladder and walked back in? I don't remember. You don't remember? The fact that Barry can't remember falling off the ladder immediately says to me that he's sustained a head injury. He's looking at redoing this roof. Yeah. Two off me and back. All right, Barry, so have you got a, have you got any bleeding on your head there? Yes. Oh, a little bit, yeah. Just let me have a look here. I can't see it, but you can tell. We've got some more lights. Thank you. All right, stay still for me, mate. That's it. Carol, did you see the fall? No, no. I heard it. When Barry's fallen, his brain's been shaking around in his head, and the part of his brain that remembers the incident isn't working properly. Someone your age, you don't bounce like someone who's 20 or 30 anymore. Don't be rude. <laughs> <laughs> My main concern at the moment is there's definitely bruising or some bleeding going on inside his brain. So this fall could be a life-threatening injury. Do you know what day of the week it is? How are you going, mate? Oh, what are those? What? You get the shorts out, mate. It's hot. Regular partners Mike and Eamon are about to clock on for the afternoon shift. I don't know where to look. Like, I can't look at your eyes because mm. I'm drawn down there. But Mike's uniform is raising some eyebrows. Man, I've got to... I need to put my sunnies on. Oh, yeah. Look at these. Look at that bad boy. He's so white. <laughs> so Foxy rolls in and he's got his shorts on. I've never seen something so offensive in an ambulance branch. Are they short pants or are they long shorts? Oh, I think they're long shorts. They're just they're below the knee because I'm tasteful. Eamon is the cool guy on the truck. I'm the dork and that's fine. I think these shorts are a great idea, but Eamon is not a fan. You can deliver healthcare and the mail all at the same time, mate. I do sometimes walk into jobs, get the mail from the letterbox and take <laughs> it in. Well, they'll confuse you now for a postman. They might. Foxy's a nice guy. He's very caring for his patients. Is he a trendsetter? Absolutely not. Emergency services, tell me exactly what's happened. So it's got my dad. He suffers from heart failure and he's also getting some oncology treatment. He was just feeling really dizzy and I've just taken his blood pressure. He's reading 63 over 58. The SOS is from a frightened daughter. Her dad is battling cancer and today he appears to be critically unwell. Oh, he's dizzy with a blood pressure of 63. That's not a number I like. Less than 90 is not a number that I like. When the blood pressure's low, you're not getting enough oxygen-rich blood to all your organs, particularly the brain, but also the heart and the kidneys. So having a low blood pressure for a prolonged time, those organs are going to start to suffer and they're going to start to shut down. We're here. Hello. Hello, I'm Bruno. My name's Amy. I've got Mike. Hello, What's Dad's name? Uh, Michael? Hello, Michael. I just can't get up. I get a whole hot sweet. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just about to collapse on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also suffering from thyroid cancer, and it's metastasized. The frail 71-year-old has been fighting aggressive cancer for the last two years. Michael, how much do you weigh at the moment? 15. You used to have a bit of a belly, like a little man belly. Yeah. Um, and that's just completely gone. There are good and bad days. Today is not so good. In the 80s with me, mate. OK. It's low, yeah. And that's low for someone that's lying flat. There's not many people that could tolerate having a blood pressure this low. Just going to pop some stickers on Michael, see what your heart's doing. My concern is if his blood pressure falls further, he could become unconscious and, worst case scenario, go into cardiac arrest. Uh, I've been having spells where I feel faint yep. after I eat a lot. In Melbourne's central business district, Steve and Emily have found office worker Vince in his underwear. He's complaining about being too hot and severe dizziness. 
This morning I had brunch. Yeah. It was just yep. pork belly with some fried bread, eggs, uh -huh. some bread, some nice olive oil. Yeah. Um, this has happened a couple of times though. I ate a lot of the food. And then I was like, I kind of had the same symptoms. The same did you go to hospital? No, I did not. You're not allergic to anything that no. you know of? Um, okay. I have hypothyroidism and I have um, low blood pressure. Now, try and slow your breathing down. I know it's really, really hard. I've realised at this point with Vince, the more anxious he becomes, the more his symptoms are exacerbating. So I'm trying to reassure him that everything is okay and to slow his breathing down to try and make himself feel better. Good, blood pressure's really good. Yeah, blood pressure's great. Oh, that's not good to hear. <laughs> no, that means it... my blood pressure is normal. But at the moment, your heart rate's <laughs> ticking a bit faster than normal, but your blood pressure's all good. That sucks. <laughs> Normally, a patient's grateful that they're not experiencing something horrific, but Vince seemed to be quite concerned that something horrific wasn't happening. The main thing I'm worried about is, like, I'm in the office. Yeah. And all these work people are going to see me in my jocks. If you've got it, flaunt <laughs> it, mate. Seriously. To have the guts to take your clothes off at work, those colleagues will never forget this day. I'm never going to forget Vince. I tell you that much for free. Do you want to sit down on the seat? Oh. Oh. So can we just stop move for a bit? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Oh. Just relax. Just calm your breathing. We look at the blood pressure, and the blood pressure comes back normal. But he's got nausea, and we still don't understand why he's feeling the way he's feeling. Uh, Something's not adding up with Vince. Uh, Keep your head nice and straight. In Melbourne's southeast, 77 year old Barry has fallen off a three metre ladder while trying to repair his roof. Look, I banged your head, didn't I? Yeah, you banged your head. You keep asking the same questions over and over because you were knocked out, Barry. Oh, OK, I don't remember a thing. Yeah. Cullen's worried the retired plumber is showing signs of a bleed on his brain. So what I'm going to give you now is a medication called Endansetron, and this is in case you get sick. Luckily for Barry, his wife of 43 years, Carol, was home when he crashed off the ladder. I'll just have a chat to your wife. Oh, shit. With paramedics now looking after her husband, a distraught Carol has called their daughter. My name's Cullen, I'm from the ambulance. OK? Sorry. He's talking to us. He's talking to us. We're going to look after him. We're going to take him into the Alfred because he's old and he's fallen from the roof, all right? Yeah, OK. I'm coming now. I was in the house and I heard this bang. And it was an unusual bang. We're just going to get you to stand nice and gentle. That's it. This bang just seemed to be something that made me think, oh, that's not right. That's it. So I went out the back and found him on the ground. I'm sorry. Um, and he was unconscious at that stage. Let's go up a little bit with the stretcher. I was thinking of terrible things. I was thinking that maybe he might die. Maybe he has a brain injury. Maybe he won't be able to live at home anymore. We're going to look after him. All right, OK, thank you. So you hear of people having falls and not recovering. Lots of things race through your mind. A few bumps is becoming mad. I'll see you inside there. Sometimes brain injuries can progress with time. It depends on whether inside the brain an artery or a vein has been ruptured or damaged. So sometimes we may see a slow progression or worsening in someone's head injury, depending on what part of the brain has been injured. We're going to lay back to bed. So you just slide back with it nice and gently, OK? So we need to get him to hospital as quickly as we can. So when Eva and I first started going out, I would always turn up with magnums, I'd turn up with beer with lime in it, and she'd drink it, and, you know, I thought, oh, this chick's pretty cool. Micah paramedics Simon and Michaela have just begun their day. Simon is being nostalgic about life when he first fell in love with his wife. It was in that smitten yeah. stage, you're, you're eating all high-fat stuff, and you don't care because you're, like, euphoric with... You're in love. ..love in your life, yeah. Yeah. And then after six weeks, she's like, I hate beer, and I don't really particularly like Magnums either. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't say I don't like you, but... <laughs> no, she likes me. Of course she likes me. Well, she tolerates me. Aww. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Emergency services. Tell me exactly what's happened. I've got a three-year-old. My mother's looking after her, and she said that she can't stop coughing and that she can't breathe. 
A frightened mother is calling for help after being told her asthmatic son is struggling for air. The woman is now racing to be with her little boy, but she's fearing the worst. Was he able to talk at all to you? Barely. Is he completely alert? I don't know. Then we help the organizer going to be getting there as quick as they can, OK? So, a three-year-old, he can't stop coughing and he can't breathe properly. Yep. Michaela and Simon are on their way. Lights and sirens to the time critical case. So, a three-year-old small child. Children are stressful jobs. They can deteriorate rapidly. So on the way to these cases, you're doing a lot of arithmetic. You're trying to work out medication doses, equipment that you might possibly need. 4.5 millimetre tube. We're preparing for the worst possible outcome, which could be that we need to intubate them for respiratory failure. Hello. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Rocco. Rocco. My name is Michaela. I was so scared because he got very bad asthma. Sure. He ended up in the hospital double times. Yeah. OK. Terrified grandmother Semsa is on babysitting duties. Her grandson had his first asthma attack when he was just 10 months old. Today, she's sick with worry. So how long was he coughing for today? 10 minutes before and he no stop. OK. Do you have a cough at the moment? That's not very good. Do you think that I could check a few things? Maybe I could put some stickers on your, on your tummy and on your chest here. Would that be OK? So although Rocco doesn't look acutely unwell right now, I need to assess him properly. OK, sit forward for me. Good boy. We take parental and family concern really seriously when it comes to children. Big breath. In ambulance, in the medical field, we're all very aware that asthma is quite dynamic and we know children can deteriorate quickly. So just relax is your brain. Is it pain or is it the dizziness? I don't know. It's just all of it. In the city, Steve and Emily are trying to find the cause of office worker Vince's confusing symptoms. I feel like I'm going to be sick, but I can't be sick. OK. Sit, nice, easy breath. Do you feel like you're on a boat rocking side to side at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Have you ever had vertigo in your life before? Probably. I don't know. Vertigo can cause really severe dizziness. We see it in lots of patients, and it can be really debilitating. Uh, Maybe this is potentially what's happening to Vince today. How do I deal with vertigo? Um, this injection should help. How do you stop it from happening? You just need medication to control it. Have you had lots of sinus issues recently? Oh, really right. blocked? Sinus issues? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It could definitely be that then. All the time. Yeah. Just being like, yo, why can't I breathe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, fever. Yeah. It sucks. sucks. Yeah. It does suck. Anti-nausea medication has now been given to make Vince feel more comfortable. Good man, control your breathing. You're doing really good, Vince. But the distressed patient still needs to go to hospital for further tests. Just a few bumps while we get you in. OK, Vince. I'm good to go, thanks. Same Vince. Vincent. Yeah. It's very weird. I, I... It just comes in waves. Go to your happy place, Vince. I'm incredibly happy that I... Um... That you took all your clothes off for work. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you gave him a show. Yeah. Is it Magic Man? <laughs> Magic, Magic Mike. Magic Mike. <laughs> Magic Vince. All we needed was the background music for you. I know. The last time I had to go to hospital, I was playing table tennis. Yeah. This was middle school, playing table tennis. I tried to be cool and jump on the table tennis table. I fell and yeah. cut my ball sack. Oh, oh man! <laughs> to go to hospital for it. Vince! <laughs> we are here. Excellent. I know. We'll get in. And no more playing table tennis, mate. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 100%. I think. 100%. I think. Um, everything's still good. OK. And I'm feeling... Heaps better? Heaps better, yeah. Good, man. Vince has made my day and then some. He is absolutely hilarious. I'm just so happy that you told me that story. Oh, it's my favourite story. Yeah. And you know what? You have to laugh about it, otherwise you just cry. 
Hopefully with Vince today, he'll talk to a doctor, they'll rule out anything more sinister. If they do diagnose vertigo, they'll give him a management plan and maybe some medication to take home. Then he can be in and out really quickly. Can you poke your tongue out for me, Michael? Oh, you're a bit dry. In Melbourne's southeast, cancer patient Michael is battling desperately low blood pressure. Every time he raises his head, he just gets dizzy. He literally hasn't left the bed. Yeah. Um, I can't get any more liquid into him. Daughter Prue called for an ambulance after her 71-year-old dad was unable to get up. OK. Is he on some fluid tablets? Uh, yes, he is, yeah. Oh, gee, you're very organised. Uh, yeah. Ten yeah. points. <laughs> With a complex patient like Michael, someone like Prue is invaluable. She has all of his medical history, all of his medications, as well as a really good handover about what's been happening, ready to go today. 36. Sugar is 6.7, so that's nice and normal. OK. The good thing is oxygen levels are good. You're not running a temp. Heart rate's looking reasonable. So it sounds like a fluid balance yeah. issue to me. We've obviously got a lot coming out and then a not. Not a lot going in. So that's why his blood pressure's dropped. Yeah. Eamon and Mike will now set up an intravenous drip to give much needed fluids to their dangerously dehydrated patient. Do you live here by yourself? No, we live together. Oh, great. She made me move in with her. Are you a bit reluctant to accept the help? No. Always a good daughter. Yeah. Oh, she runs a pretty tight ship here, Prue. She's well organised. For someone with a really serious illness like cancer, having a support network is so important. You can have the best medical team in the world, but if you don't have a really supportive environment to come home to, it's going to be so much harder. Yeah, numbers are all right. Yeah. With the fluid now taking effect and Michael's blood pressure slowly climbing, the boys can prepare to get moving. So I know that you can help us, but I want you to just do your best not to. Mike has been going to the gym relentlessly, waiting for this moment. The boys would like to move Michael directly to a stretcher, but with limited space, it's not possible. Ready, set, go. Smooth well done. Out. You feeling woozy? Yeah. Good. Michael is too complex for us to completely fix in the ambulance. He needs specialist care and a hospital to get him back on track. Ready, set, go. Oh, there we go. Smooth as, well done. There is a risk of his blood pressure becoming incredibly low, so I want to get him to a hospital as fast as we can. We'll try and get you feeling a bit better. Can you take a big breath? Good boy. Micah paramedics, Michaela and Simon, are assessing asthmatic three-year-old Rocco. Can you poke out your tongue for me? And can you say, ah? Grandma Semsa was looking after Rocco and his brother Jackson when he was suddenly unable to breathe. You just don't stop coughing. I drink him bored. I still breathe. I drink him out when I see with asthma cases, they're stressful because children can compensate up until a point and then they rapidly deteriorate. They can be well and then can end up in a life-threatening situation quickly. Hey, what's happening? Dad Chris was called straight away and dropped everything to rush to his son's side. Mum is still on her way. I've had a listen to his chest. His chest is clear. Um, and his oxygen levels yeah. are fine. They're 100%. <laughs> I think Mum's here. <laughs> Everything's all right. Everything's OK. Mum Sunita is distraught. After being told Rocco was struggling to breathe, she's been fearing the worst. I've been to many cases where patients have been quite unwell with asthma and their family are quite distressed by this. In my own personal experience, my sister's been quite unwell with asthma in the past and we've had to call an ambulance a few times for her so I can empathise with them and I realise how scary it must present for them. Yeah. Do you think he was swollen? Yeah, I think he was swollen. I'm yeah. just taking a moment. He's alive and that's all that matters. Right now, I know that Rocco is not an acute life threat, but his asthma has been bad enough to put him into hospital before. 
that's already a red flag for us. And there could still be something going on that I'm not seeing. If you've got everything you need, let's start heading out to the ambulance. So although he doesn't need intensive care management from us, he still does need to go to hospital. God, I've never been so scared in my life. Yeah, I know it can be quite stressful. Rocco will be taken to a nearby emergency department by a second ambulance crew who have been given a detailed handover from Michaela and Simon. Bye, nice to meet you. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Will. Rocco will get all the tests he needs and to be observed over the next couple of hours. I hope that Rocco will be OK, but his mum must be very worried. Just look straight ahead of me. I'm just going to have a look at your pupil. Barry has fallen three metres off a ladder and hit his head. They're both equal and they're both reacting the same. While intensive care paramedic Cullen is still worried the 77-year-old may have a bleed on the brain. No pain in your pelvis here? No. No. Okay, moving on. Thank no. you. Pain in your leg? No. Pain in this leg? No. He is amazed Barry doesn't appear to have broken any bones after hitting the ground hard. Push against my hand. Yep, push back up. Jeez, you got... I suppose you're a plumber. You're pretty bloody strong, aren't you, mate? It was Barry's wife, Carol, who found her husband unconscious. What do you think Carol's going to say when she uh, sees you in at the hospital? What's she like with these sorts of things? Oh, it drives me mad. <laughs> she drives you mad? Yeah. <laughs> Does she a worry. Yeah. I had a chat with her. She was a bit worked up. Barry tells me Carol's a bit of a worry, but I reckon Barry probably gives Carol a few things to worry about. She's going to meet us in there with your daughter. She's going to wait for your daughter to come. Right. And they'll go in together. Right. Your blood pressure's a bit high now, 150 on 60. Well, I don't think Carol's going to let him anywhere near a ladder for some time, and that's probably a good thing. If Barry had a foreman on his own and Carol wasn't there, things could have been completely different today. And it may have been hours later before someone found him. We're just approaching the Alfred now, mate. Doctors are now waiting to give Barry urgent head scans. See you at the other side, mate. At Barry's age, falling off a ladder could be a life-changing or, or life-ending event. The heads are closed vault, so if there is any bleeding, there's no effort to get out. So often swelling or bleeding in the brain can get worse. We've um, notified for trauma, yeah. Emergency services, tell me exactly what's happened. An uh, older gentleman that's been vomiting and is quite ill through the day, and now he's got pains across his chest. In country Victoria, a 62-year-old man has been ignoring warning signs all day and could be having a major heart attack. He's had an angina before and a heart attack. And a heart attack? And he's not somebody who shows that he's ever in pain or uncomfortable and he um, asks to go somewhere for medical help. OK, I've got some help organised for you there. Stay on the line. It's another Code 1 case for Cullen. But this time, he's heading out of the city for a 50-kilometre journey to get to the patient. Got a long drive. A local ambulance crew have picked up this seriously ill man and are now organising to meet up with Cullen. I need to actually get off here. He will travel with them back into the city to the closest major hospital. You can't ever relax when you've got someone having a potential heart attack because even though on the outside I'm looking like I'm calm and collected, inside I'm thinking about what's happening next, what might happen if his heart stops. I need to be prepared for anything. Okay, mate, how are you? Hey, how you going? Hey, my name's Colin. I'm from Robert. The Hi, Robert. All right. I'm good. I've probably been better than you, though, today, no, by the sounds yeah. of it. So, Robert's a 62-year-old gentleman, yep. uh, fit and well. His only history is a bit of angina previously. Yep. He's had an onset of some central burning chest pain today at 900 hours. Yep. Sort of just after um, unloading a camping trailer. Yep, so that's but this morning. That's this morning. Yep. He's persisted with it the whole day. Rob has waited a long, long time to call an ambulance. For every minute that you are having pain, your heart has been starved of oxygen and heart muscle is either dying or dead and it doesn't grow back. We've performed a 12 lead and... Um, Have you got a copy of that? Yeah, yeah so the first one came up as posterior STEMI and then the subsequent one is inferior STEMI. Yeah. So, Rob, not going to sugarcoat it. If you're having a heart attack...
how are you feeling? Not dizzy or lightheaded? Not at all. Probably had close to our 250, so I've yeah. just slowed it down a little. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Um, and we'll just keep trickling through the rest of that 500 mils. Cancer patient Michael is being transported to hospital after his blood pressure plummeted to a dangerous level. Uh, 92 on 53 is the blood pressure, Foxy. Uh, it's moving in the right direction. With fluids on board, the 71-year-old is improving. But Mike and Eamon are worried the chronically ill Michael could crash at any time. Because my blood pressure was so low, was that advisable to ring the ambulance? Absolutely. And if you're ever in doubt about calling an ambulance and you think, oh, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, my advice would be call. And then we've got triage practitioners and call takers that will help decide what's appropriate for you and what you need. Don't like being on nurses. Not at all. Not at all. It's always the people who are the sickest that are worried about being a nuisance. But you need us today and we need to be here. So you have done the right thing calling Triple Zero. Michael's daughter, Prue, has helped her dad throughout his cancer battle. And as always, will be coming to hospital to be by his side. Have you two always been very close? Oh, yeah. I've brought her up since she was three on my own. Really? So you're a single dad for a long time? Well, you've done a good job. He's doing a phenomenal job looking after you. We go to a lot of patients who don't have a support network around them. So when I meet families like Michael and Prue, it's really heartwarming and beautiful to see that he has someone who's willing to look after him for as long as he needs. Has it ever been frightening, sort of, the whole cancer journey? I never worried or got concerned or griefed or anything. I just yeah. affected what they said and said, all right, let's go from there. Uh, rolled with the punches, so to speak. I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Few bumps as we come out. Whoop. Michael, he's got such a long road ahead of him. All right, let's go. We'll get you in as quick as we can. With any sort of chronic disease, and particularly cancer, I think the will to keep going and having something to live for is so important. For someone like Michael, I can see that he has a real fighting spirit. Rob's not going to sugarcoat it. They're having a heart attack. Intensive care paramedic Cullen has been called to a critically ill patient 50 kilometres north of the city. We're going to take you to a hospital that's capable of opening up the vessel that's blocked, oh, yeah, yeah. putting a stent in to keep that vessel open and yeah, make yeah. sure that your heart gets yeah, plenty of blood to it, all right? 62-year-old Rob had chest pains for nearly 12 hours before calling an ambulance. How's the pain at the oh, moment? Fine, mate. Oh, fine. Yeah? Yep. Cullen must now work quickly to temporarily treat the blood clots blocking Rob's heart. Just going to give you some medication. Yeah. It's going to thin your blood, basically. Yeah, that works. When I first lay eyes on Rob, I look at him and think, he just looks like a typical Aussie bloke. He's probably having one of the worst days of his life, but he's amazingly happy and has a smile on his face, which is quite surprising for someone having a heart attack. Attention, mate. What's going on here? Well, mate, sometimes in your life, you got to be number one. You've got to think about yourself, and you're the number one priority at the moment. Despite how good Rob looks and the positive attitude that he's got, his heart is still dying. Yeah, right to start moving. We need to get Rob to hospital as quickly as we can because every minute that we are on the road is a minute that his heart muscle is being damaged. So he's had his aspirin, hasn't he, Ward? Yeah. yeah. Rob was helping organise his son's 40th birthday when he felt a burning pain in his chest. So you're moving a camper trailer this morning when it started? Yeah. How were you moving it by hand, pushing yeah, it? Yeah. Probably brought it on. Yeah. So the part of your heart that's blocked at the moment are the vessels that supply the bottom and the back of your heart. So I just okay. want to do another ECG. Okay, okay. So I'm going to need you to sit forward yeah. a little bit. Yeah. yeah right. We've got 45 minutes till we can get Rob to hospital. So in that time, there's still potential that he may deteriorate. He's putting these dots on the back of your chest, mate. You've got a cramp, have you? Just one more to go, and then I'll get you to sit back. All right, sit back for me, Rob. Sorry about that, buddy. Yeah. Rob, he's at risk of cardiac arresting the entire way 
up to the cath lab. So even up in the cath lab on the table, he could still die. So we need to get him there as quickly and safely as possible. Hey, Robert. Yes, mate. Right? Phone number, mate. I would have a clue. Never owned a mobile phone, mate. Never owned a mobile phone. Do you have a phone at all at home? You don't even have a phone. Oh, I mean, you don't have a phone. How did you call the ambulance today then? After calling an ambulance, Rob's daughter phoned his longtime partner, Lynn. You know what? I reckon you're pretty lucky tonight. When I heard Belinda say, you know, Dad's had a heart attack, I thought, oh, I didn't know what to do. I just cried and cried most of the day. Just going to have a listen to your breathing, all right? I just didn't know how bad it was or anything like that. I just didn't know. Your big breath for me. Still no pain? No, oh, fine. So fine as in zero pain? Good. Even if you feel a little bit of a that burning feeling coming back? Robert is a good man. He can do everything for people, but he can't look after himself. You know, if anything happened to him now, I don't know what would happen, honestly. I just don't know. Just relax, just relax. Just getting your blood pressure. Just relax your hands. If you can put that hand down there, you need to get it nice and still as possible just for this ECG. 62-year-old Rob is suffering a major heart attack. So we're going to the Royal Melbourne Hospital. We're going to transmit the ECG to the hospital so they know you're coming, so they can open up the cath lab to do the procedure. You'll be like a new man in the next few days, mate. Amazingly, Rob doesn't look that sick. But Cullen's almost certain the arteries in his patient's heart are blocked and need urgent surgery. They go in your wrist or in your groin, most likely in your wrist. So they'll go up into your heart, have a look at where the blockage is. OK, and they'll unblock that, then put a stent in there to keep that vessel open. It's pretty much like, you know those guys that when you have a block drain, yeah, they come and reline the pipes? Yeah. That's what they're doing for you. Yeah, that's probably up my boat. <laughs> yeah. Heart attacks can present in many, many different ways and people experience pain differently as well. Rob's still laughing, carrying on in the back of the ambulance and seems quite blasé to the fact that he's having a heart attack tonight. So no pain at all at the moment? Fine, fine, yeah. Rob's casual approach to his mortality could have something to do with his old job working in a cemetery. So you don't dig graves anymore? No, uh, retired, mate. Retired. What does a retired grave digger do when you, uh, when you go into retirement? Move to the bush. Move to the bush. So were you doing the digging or you had other people doing the digging? Yeah, people often say to us Ambos, we have some funny stories about our work. What about you being a grave digger? You must have uh, seen yeah, some yeah. interesting things. Well, as a boss said, mate, that many people wanted to see it wasn't funny. <laughs> I'll never forget Rob, because I don't reckon I've had anyone in my career having a heart attack that's as happy and as jovial as him. Just coming up the last little segment before we get to the hospital. So still no pain in the chest, still no nausea in the tummy. All right. But he is still having an, an inferior STEMI. And until we get that blood vessel unblocked, um, it will continue to die and damage the heart. All right. You just stay there, we'll open the back doors, we're gonna jump out the side, all right? As we're wheeling Rob into the cath lab, I think it's been such an experience to be with him today. A few bumps as we come out there. All good? I get people looking after you like this, mate. Country health mentality, mate. That's right. And I hope that he makes a full recovery and survives for many years to come. In the 80s with me, mate. Okay. Cancer patient Michael's blood pressure was dangerously low when his daughter Prue called for help. Her dad spent several days in hospital before being released. But sadly, the 71-year-old's brave battle is now reaching its final stages. Hello. I was so scared because he got very bad asthma. Three-year-old Rocco was suddenly unable to breathe while at his grandmother's house. <laughs> Everything's all right. Everything's OK. Having been hospitalised with asthma before, Dad Chris and distressed Mum Sunita race to be by their little boy's side. You OK? Rocco was treated with medication at hospital and returned home to his grateful family. Mum and Dad are now using an inhaler as part of Rocco's vital asthma action plan. So you can't remember falling, can you? Not at all. 77-year-old Barry crashed off a three-metre ladder while fixing his roof. 
Do you know what day of the week it is? With no memory of the accident, Cullen was worried his patient had suffered a bleed on the brain. What's the tea? Haven't thought that far ahead. Surprisingly, Barry's scans were clear and he was sent home the next day. I didn't even get a headache out of it, believe it or not. I want the biscuit. So. Wife Carol is thrilled. Her husband has made a full recovery. It gave him a big fright that day. He actually came out from the emergency and he realised how lucky he'd been in that he'd only had three stitches put in his head. I think he was a big wake-up call that he isn't going to be getting on a ladder any time soon. Hi. Hi. Daughter Keneal was terrified at the thought of losing her father. Oh, shit. Is he not? He's talking to us. How's the head? Good. Yeah, yeah good. the head's good. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad to feel any better. Yeah. You gave us all a fright. Myself too. Mm. Dad is amazing and I remember he had a heart attack a couple of years ago and I was beside myself and I guess that just kind of brought everything home that if anything was to happen to mum or dad that it would, to me, it's the worst thing in the world and that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no more ladders, please. No comment. <laughs> very lucky and very appreciative of the treatment I had. Just thank you for everyone and all their help and what they've done for me. Thank you. Rob, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You're having a heart attack. Cullen was also very concerned about his other patient, Rob. The former gravedigger suffered a major heart attack and was on the brink of going into cardiac arrest. <laughs> Have a cup of tea, Twines. But the ever optimistic Rob had four step. put in his heart and made it back to his loving partner, Lynn. I'm so glad Robert, after his heart attack, he gave up the cigarettes and the drinking and he's a better person for it. He really is. I love him very much and I always will. He's a great guy. And I'm just hoping he's not going to have another one. Have you had your tablets today, huh? Yes, love. I've had my drugs today. Okay. Yes, all right. Yeah, it was cool. But the paramedics were there to fix me, weren't they? And they fixed me and brought me back. Paramedics for grass, that was just unbelievable. They're worth their weight in gold.